Look at you, hacker. A p- p- pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess destined to inherit the earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. February 3rd is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems, nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNN Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. This incredible union of government and corporation is made possible by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek, fast, revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. Hello, and welcome to my new Let's Play. And by new, I mean my second Let's Play. <laughs> because the last one I made was my FTL one, which was about... <clears throat> about a year ago. No. Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN Recruitment Facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The grav shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the grav shafts. So, um, I wanted to play a game that I was really, really familiar with, and also that I really loved. Um, there was a lot of games I was thinking about, but there wasn't a game that really popped out to me as much as this one does. System Shock 2 is just, it's just a really, really good game. Every playthrough can be different, there's a lot of different ways to handle situations, it's a very flexible playing style, it's just very... And it's just a lot of fun. If you've never played it and you're watching this video somehow, I'm going to you need to have a taste of this game because it's it's exceptional. Um a little history about the game it was created by Looking Glass Studios and Irrational Games, uh headed by Ken Levine who went on to make obviously uh its successor BioShock and the BioShock games. But um and then there's a lot of elements in BioShock that come from this game and I just think this game is just it really is just a masterpiece of its craft. I, I really, really like this game. Unfortunately, Looking Glass Studios went defunct, and the copyright of this game kind of got slammed and thrown into like a weird, twisted situation. And Step into it didn't the grab sell to proceed to the street level recruitment. It didn't sell too well, unfortunately. But um, it's a really great game, and uh, just a one thing to point out as we start here in this uh, kind of pre-game. Uh, area. You might notice if you played or not. Uh, this this game was made in like '99, '98, and uh, the the graphics are really, really good. Yeah, these are not the original textures. Uh, I have HD texture packs for just about everything in the game. 
I wanted to make the game look a lot nicer. Its graphics were good for its time. They're, they are a little rough around the edges, personally, and um, I think these HD texture packs are really well made. Uh, kudos to any of the people who were responsible for making these, because they just make the game look beautiful. The atmosphere is just really outstanding. Um, so now we're in this pre-game area, and I'll explain a little bit about this, but first, this is the tutorial section right here, the basic training. I'm just going to run past this. Before you choose your career, you'll want to... If you've completed basic training, you're ready for the... Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. A shuttle will take you to a UNN orbital space station, where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. Alright, so I ran past all that, but basically... Basic training is the basic tutorial. I'll explain how all that stuff works once we get into the actual game, so I don't want to walk through that. Um, <clears throat> this is an advanced training, and the only reason for me to go through these is to explain what these branches mean, basically. Basically, you start out the game, and there are three branches that basically they, they designate what kind of proficiency you're going to have at the beginning of the game towards three, three categories. Weapon technical or psi skills. Weapon is self-explanatory. It's guns, gun proficiency, ammo proficiency, um, the ability to use guns in general. Technical is hacking, research, modifications, and psi, kill, sky, psi skills are psychic powers. Uh, I'll make a lot of comparisons to Bioshock if, for this game, since I assume most people have played Bioshock. Um, psi skills are like plasmids. They're basically what became plasmids. Except we use a thing called a psi amp, and you'll see what that looks like. Um, I've done plenty of technical and weapon runs. I've done hybrids of both, basically, but I have never done a full-scale psi run. I've never gone that far in the psi power scale. There's like five tiers, and I think I've just only gone up to the highest of two, not even to three. And that's what this run's gonna be, so it's gonna be a little bit of a new experience for me and you. Or maybe not you, depending. But um, definitely, the hacking is really important. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to focus on a mostly Siron, probably with some technical. I know this is a lot to take in at the beginning, but it'll start making sense. But this isn't the end of the pre-game stuff. This is just pretty much the beginning. So here's this uh, beautiful 3D rendered cutscene here. Just about the only thing that wasn't modified by HD texture packs. Alright, so now we're here. Basically, this is the pre-game setup. Once you choose your branch, you get three years of training. Which basically means you get proficiencies in the branch you chose for the beginning of the game. The OSA welcomes you to Orbital Station Chun Lo. Orbital Ready Station yourself Chun to feel the limitations of your mind slipping away. We will guide your path over the next four years. The shuttle base at the center. All right, yeah, I just sort of got out of that voice clip, but um, it's actually it says four years. Technically, you only get three years of upgrades. I guess the fourth year is kind of the last thing that happens, but it doesn't involve an upgrade at all. So basically, she was just talking about how now we can use psychic powers, and here are our three paths. What makes the beginning of the game so cool, and what makes a lot of this just very flexible and different, is that even if you choose a specific branch, the sensory deprivation tanks aboard th the sensory deprivation tanks of the sensory deprivation tanks aboard the TOS Shaoling await you. There, you will spend a solitary year focused in a meditation on motion and sound, and how they may serve your will. If you saw those green text things at the top of the screen show up, those were all upgrade gains that I was going to gain for going to each one of them. Each one had something different, but they also had a lot in common. All three of them had second tier neural capacity, which means I could have I could upgrade to second tier psi powers without having to buy into the tiers. And you know, that'll make sense when we start actually doing upgrades. But basically, it gives you a flexible difference for how you start the game. We've already focused towards psi powers, but what kind of psi powers do we want? Well, I'm going to go for this one. The sensory deprivation tanks aboard the TOS Runang await you. 
I believe all of them also offer cryokinesis since it's a really, really important mandatory kind of psi power, but they all have different se secondary psi powers you get for upgrades. This one is kinetic redirection, which is basically telekinesis to bring objects to you. It can be really useful and I like it. So that's our first year of upgrades. I, I, I like this here. It's, uh, they do a very nice job of kind of incorporating any, everything into a story perspective using the text and mission. It, it's very cool to look into, but this beginning part of the game is really long if I wanted to go in depth. So for your sake, I'm just going to get things done. Dr. Chandris Falan's research labs have produced many of the your body has been neglected in your training of your mind. Sifting the thoughts of treachery and disloyalty from the morass of emotion. So that was a, a different kind of upgrade scale. There was, they were all different. The one I picked was psionic ability, which uh, makes my psi powers more powerful, basically. The other ones were research, which allows you to research unresearched objects uh, that may be useful for you. And the other one was endurance for hit points. Um, I get psionic ability just to strengthen my psionic powers just to go on the get-go. So you get this menu again. And now here is our final year and we'll be picking a final upgrade before the real game starts. Acts of in the grand scheme, in many threats to security can only be defeated from acts of political terrorism and corporate coercion disturb corporate Alright, so I pretty much boosted past those if you stop to read them or read what I got for all three of them. I picked the the uh, psychogenic agility, which allows me to have a really high agility um, stat for a short amount of time. It's useful at the beginning of the game, that's why I'm getting it. Um, it'll help me through a couple of situations that are going to be a little uh, discomforting. But all of them offered strength, agility, and cyber affinity, so those are things we got. I will explain what all this means when we get to the actual upgrades because they come back and they have significance, trust me. But we gotta get through this first cutscene, or rather, the, the final pregame cutscene. Steady yourself, soldier. This is Dr. Janice Polito of the computer ops staff of the Von Braun. You're safe for the time being. You're recovering from the effects of surgery and will be unable to remember any of the events of the last few weeks. You're on board the starship Von Braun and something's gone very, very wrong. Some kind of force has hijacked this ship. That's why you volunteered to be implanted with some experimental cybernetic implants. Rely on your cyber interface. It just might save your life. You must find an elevator and come up to Deck 4 to meet me. Deck 4. Can you remember that? But keep your eyes open. They're after us both now. So now we're on the Von Braun, and shit has hit the fan. Pretty fast, actually. Basically after we got here. So here we are. Watch out. 
I'm getting strange readings from that radar dish outside the window. It's become unstable due to... Move! Take cover! Alright, <laughs> uh, that's happened. I'm gonna take some time to uh, show you the UI here. Here's our inventory. Uh, we start off with our Psy Amp, which I'll explain later, but we get one for being Psy people. Uh, bottom left, you have Health, which is this blue bar. Uh, psy Power, which is this red bar, so we're limited to how much Psy we can use. Research tab, not useful yet. Uh, map, mini map if I wanted it. Um, these, are, these are things I'll explain soon enough. Your PDA, messages from Polito, logs, notes, help, and key cards, and uh, upgrades, showing our upgrades, but these aren't important yet. They will be soon. So, now, everything in the game, like, see how there's bars around this guy? It's a corpse. Let's right click. And then, I'll pick up his wrench, bring it to my weapon slot. You notice that that's my weapon slot, there's my armor slot, and implant slot, and these are, these will be important later, but they don't need to explain them now. These black boxes uh, can be unlocked through upgrades, but I don't have them yet. I need the wrench so I can beat the shit out of this and go up. The entire sector is depressurizing and the blue vacuum shield won't last long. Get through a secure airlock before you're sucked into space. Move it! So we got a key card in the last room and we used it. Here's cryogenic center to say that we have it. We open this door. And now we also have a log and a key keypad here. We don't know the pad to it. I can't hack it. But we did get this. Great. We've got to change the access codes out of cryo A again. Like I've got nothing better to do. I think Grassy just likes to make work for me. I'll set the new code to 45100. That should be easy enough to remember. Most of the codes are found on PDAs. Um, not all logs are mandatory to listen to, though, but a lot of them are story-centric, and I think they're important for the whole experience, which is why I'm going to play all of the ones I get. There's another wrench we don't need. It's a dead power cell and a recharge station, which will recharge anything that requires voltage. Polito's going to tell me to do this now. I'm going to do it anyway. This power cell is dead. There should be a recharger nearby. Just use it, and it will reach... Good. You've managed to get out before the whole area depressurized. I've just uploaded you some cybernetic modules. You can use them to upgrade your cybernetic rig at the upgrade units in this area. There are four types of units in the next room. One for each subsystem of your cybernetic gear. Stats, psi, weapons, and tech. But use the modules carefully. They're hard to come by. So yeah, basically we got some nanites. And that's this first icon here. Those are to buy things from the vending machines. Um, they're money, basically. You buy stuff with them. These other things we got were cybernetic modules. That's what Polito just uploaded us. They're to upgrade, basically, this in our MFD to upgrade these skills, which are, which you can only upgrade at these terminals, which appear about one or, one or two times each deck. And all the levels in this game are separated into decks and sub-decks, depending on how big the level is. So we're uh, on deck two med sci right now. We're in the science. We're about to get to the science sector. And here's our upgrades. We have stats, which is strength, endurance, psionic ability, agility, and cybernetic affinity. Now the psi and the cyber ones are pretty uh, specific, depending on your what are you doing, hacking or psi power. And the other ones are basic stats: strength, endurance, agility. Agility's Quickness, strength, the strength, and endurance is hit points. Now we don't—we only have one endurance, which means we're not very resistant. So we're going to get one right here. We had four cybernetic modules, and that took three, and now we only have one. So technically, we really couldn't upgrade anything else. But the game is nice, and on this corpse, there's four more. So now we have five. Here's Psy. This is the one you'll you'll be seeing a lot of since doing do this playthrough. Um, here are the things we got during our training pre-game. Kinetic redirection, psychogenic agility, and cryokinesis, and also second tier neural capacity. Um, the cool thing about getting second tier neural capacity is that it would have cost a lot of cybernetic modules to get it normally. Look at three. Getting third tier is 30. 
Now if you go over to weapon, I didn't get any weapon upgrades. I can't use any weapons. You have to get standard one to even use a pistol. And it costs 12 modules. We only have five right now. So it's hard to break in to new territory. I can't even get hack one without 10. Now we're going to need hack at some point, but not yet. So we need to keep these in mind. These are all important, but Psy right now is going to be the main focus. I usually get this regeneration when I used level 2 Psy powers in my previous three playthroughs. It's useful to have regeneration because when you take hit points, it does not cost a lot of Psy power to get any all your health back. So here we go. We're in here. Some nanites. We've got a log. A med hypo. So med hypos are a quick way to get healed. There's about six type of hypos in the game. It's health, psi, speed, strength, anti-rad, and anti-toxin. And those all do different things. Med and psi are the most important because they replenish these bars. And psi hypo is going to be very, very useful for us later in the game. I promise you that. Hey Doc, a security bot showed up with orders for me to place this grunt into the recovery freezer. I'm no cyber doc, but I know a plant job when I see one. I suppose you know they outlawed our grade cyber goodies after that fiasco back on Citadel Station. But hey, I just work here, right? I've barely played System Shock 1, but for your uh, understanding, uh, Citadel Station is where System Shock 1 takes place. Um, so they reference it a lot, but you don't need to play that game to play this game. Also, this guy's got another sci a psionic amp, but we do not need it. If I wasn't a Psy guy, I might pick that up just in case I did need it. Can somebody let me out? I can't find my card. Please, let me out of here. So we have these apparitions. Uh, there's a story reason why we can see those, but I won't spoil it this early in the game. So we used our key card to get in here, and now we're in the well science done. sector. I'm uploading some more modules. Every time you do any objective in the game, Polito will give you modules to upgrade. We got four more, but I won't go back to upgrade. Instead, I now have to fight some baddies with my wrench. Welcome to hybrids, the first enemies you fight in the game. They don't drop much. They drop some soda and sometimes med hypos, and they don't take a lot of da damage either. Uh, can't do anything about that. That insipid computer Xerxes has shut down the elevator as well. You can transfer power to the engine core on deck one, which will get the elevator up and running again. But you can't use the elevator to get down there. Wait. There's some kind of maintenance access right on this hallway. You can use it to reach deck one. However, it's locked, and Xerxes is hiding the passcode from me. Dr. Watts should have the code. He's probably in the crew subsection. Grassi has the key to get in there, but he's in the medical subsection, probably near the biopsy lab. Now get to the medical subsection and find Grassi. So, Polito just talked to a lot about subsections of crap. Basically, was talking about different decks, sub decks. It's all level okay. talk, and we need to Please find people. So here's where your nanites come in. If I want a med hypo, it's 30. I'll buy it. If I want them to be less, I'd hack it, except I do not have hack skill 3. Not even close. So, basically finding out some stuff. Here's an unresearched object. If we get research 1, I could research it, but... And we don't even have software either, which we do also need. So we got a Psy Hypo, as you can see. We also turn on the gen Regenerator, which, for anyone who's played Bioshock 1, is like the Vita Chamber. And if you haven't played Bioshock 1, basically, um, if you die, you regenerate here. If I had not turned this on, and I had gotten killed by, say, this guy, what would have happened is I would have been in the menu again. And I would be like, well shit, I guess I'll have to load a game. Well, I don't have to do that. Because I didn't die. So, and if I died, I would regenerate here. I would not regenerate with full health, but I would regenerate here and go back out into the science sector to do whatever I wanted to do. Like, go in here. So 
So here's the first area where I'll use the Psi Amp, and I'll show you how this works. Basically, all your Psi powers are on the bottom right. You can scroll through them by tier. Go to second tier, I got Regenerate. First tier, I've got all the things I got. I'm going to get Cryokinesis equipped. And now, I'm going to use some of my Psi points, because there's a security camera around the corner. If security cameras detect me, uh, they'll send uh, hybrids after me. I could go in here and hack this, which is the security control station, but I can't. I don't even have hack skill one. So I can't shut them off, so I'll have to destroy them. So I'll hold mouse one and this bar will appear and let it go. The power outage has also taken out access to this bulkhead. It's the only way to get to the medical subsection. Pick up the battery from the floor and find a recharger. The one you used before is in hard vacuum now, I'm afraid, but there should be another one on this deck. Once you get the battery recharged, place it in the auxiliary override. So now we have a battery. We got an anti-rad hypo for whenever we need it. Um, basically, the way that charging the amp works is that when I charge it to full, it'll do the most damage, but it can overheat and also hurt me. So now there's another camera on this corner. Crowdkinesis is really good for taking these cameras out. Xerxes has control of the ship's security system. Avoid or destroy any security cameras you see. You can hack security computers to power down the cameras too, if you're good enough. But don't botch the job, or you'll set off the alarm yourself. Your corpse is useless to me. So yes, I am fighting a cybernetic psi monkey with psychic powers that's trying to kill me. And he did do a fair share of damage. He crowd kinesis me, even. That's just the first of these enemies on the science sector. And uh, it's a little introduction. Here's some antitoxin hypos. You can see that I'm pretty damaged down here. Now, med hypos are a fast way to get that done, but another good way is why I got regenerate. You charge it up, I get 10 heal points, and that only takes two sides, so I can get back to full health relatively easy. And I can just go back down and re-equip cryokinesis. Another locked box. And I don't think there's anything in here other than a view. These are information terminals. That's where uh, all the uh, tip stuff will go in your PDA, but we don't need that. Um, I believe I need to hit a button. Alright, we should be able to leave now. Alright, so on this corpse, I believe, there is research software. Version 1 research software allows me to do research, except I don't have research 1. I need the skill and the software. And the better the software, um, it's a requirement, basically. So, we also need another component, which is through this door, the chemical storeroom. Each deck has a chemical storeroom where you can find the resource. I'm gonna cut Polito off, um, and I'll tell you. Each deck is a medical storeroom, and this is how you do research. Every deck, every time you go into a chemical storeroom, there will be a log that has all of these elements of what's in the storeroom on each deck. The reason for this is when you research something, like this unresearch object that I can't research, um, it needs certain elements to complete the research. So say I need Californium, pick that up, and I would put it in there, but of course I can't do that. And there's no reason to carry them around. You leave them in the storeroom, and you come back when you need them. Since we can go through logs and scroll through decks, though we're only on MedSci, there's no reason to leave. So basically, it's the easiest way to get everything done. And we got a few logs to play. I've been unable to get in touch with Delacroix. This place is falling apart. Members of my team keep disappearing. The leaks in the venting shaft shorted out the primary access channel. And that means we'll all be on auxiliary power until we can get it back up. That means all the lifts are out. Marie, where the hell are you? Before we get the next log going, I'm going to pick up the Psy Hypo and show you the reason I picked Agility at the beginning of the game. This is one of the few areas where it's really useful, and we're going to make this work pretty fast. There's some nanites on the ground, and as you saw, there's the recharge station over there to get our power cell working. There's also a corpse down there, which I believe has some cyber modules, so we're going to make a jump for it. <laughs> this is Xerxes. Remember, the unauthorized... Now we're going to charge Agility, and we're going to run like hell. Now we took some damage, but we're alright. The agility made us fast enough to get past those guys relatively painlessly, but still with some damage. However, I can use one regenerate and just be back to full health in a second, making this really useful. Now we've got our full power cell now, 
and everything seems to be working all right. I got called up around 0430 to help unload the shuttle coming back from Tau City. Kerenskin was there alone. Jesus, what the hell happened to him? He lost most of his hair, and you could see these lumps on the side of his neck. And that smell. I told him he should go see Dr. Watts, but he told me to mind my own business. Well, well done. Da. I'm uploading some cybernetic modules. Find an upgrade unit as soon as you can. So, we got more modules for doing yet another objective, bringing us to 10. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back really quick before we go into med. And I'm going to make an impromptu upgrade. Now, there's no one back here, so this just takes some slight damage. We're going to get hack 1. It is really important to have hack 1. Because it's going to allow us to do a lot of things. This is probably one of the few tech upgrades I'm going to get in the game, but hacking is really important in this game, and it's hard for me to say, no, this is not that important. So, that's hack skill 2. This is hack skill 1. So we, I can show you how hacking works. Basically, you have to get three nodes in a row that are lit up. So, that's lit up node. That's also lit up node. And there's another one. So our hacking was correct. So we've shut off the security system for about 230 seconds. So that's how hacking works, it'll be useful. These are game players, they're bonus things, they take about level 6 hack to use, so we're not going to use them. And now, we're here at the bulkhead. Marie, I've got to restrict access to engineering until we can figure out what to do down there. It's just too hot. I don't know where all the hazard suits went, so I'm reduced to bringing down an armful of rad hypos. Those damn things always give me a headache. I'm gonna play a couple more. This is another area I didn't go into. Ever since we reached Tau Ceti, the lab monkeys have been acting strangely. Nurse Lesser picked one out of a cage to be brought in for vivisection, and the rest of them, I mean the entire group, stood up on their legs and howled. This wasn't just a random display. It was a protest. There's some bullets down there, but there's also a turret. And you can hack turrets as well, but we won't be able to with level 1 hack. So we're gonna go back now. <laughs> I've been running around trying to show you this whole science sector. It's not too big, and we're about to go into med since we've opened this. The bulkhead will take us to a subsection, which is also a level change. So when I go in here, it will change levels promptly.